The landscape of central Otago is dramatic. Wild, rugged ranges and hilltops, separated by twisting gorges, often with sheer cliffs hiding fast-flowing creeks, and secretive valleys clad partially in bush. But the hills also carry the scars of man. This whole valley was created by miners, sluicing down the landscape for the gold underneath. Not all the mining remains are so obvious. This is Bullendale, and it was here, believe it or not, that the gold miners brought about an astonishing leap in technology. At the foot of this bluff, in 1886, a hydroelectric power station was commissioned. What makes Bullendale so remarkable are two things. First, it was here that the first electricity was generated to drive industrial machinery in New Zealand. And arguably, the first electricity used for gold mining machinery anywhere in the world. And second, 1886 was only just four years after Thomas Edison had opened the world's very first power station in New York. There's not a lot left to see here. The bluff hasn't changed at all, of course, but on it there are a few fixing pins that anchored the original penstock pipes. In 1986, to mark the centennial of the opening of the station, the Pelton wheels were mounted at the foot of the bluff, roughly where they had been. And in front, there's a surviving line shaft with its belt pulleys. But by far the most significant remnants are what's left of the original brush dynamos. Their casings and a decaying laminated armature. The Department of Conservation's Dynamo Hut is most probably where the manager of the hydro station lived. It looks out down the valley towards the sledge road that brought the equipment in and looks upwards at the ridge over which the first electrical transmission line in New Zealand had to climb to feed power to the mine. And this, of course, was the point. Cable, strung between pylons, could easily take the power of the left-hand branch of Skipper's Creek, where it could be made, the three kilometres across that ridge, to the right-hand branch where it was needed. There are still quite a few remains of the mine to be found today but they have been scattered by floods. The only significant part of the battery still standing in its original position is the rock crusher that fed the broken ore down into the stamper battery below. Like the Bullendale Hydro site, the Phoenix Mine site is administered by the Department of Conservation. So, Jimmy, you can see that uh, it's worth putting on power if you've got a 30 or 40 stamps to, to uh, run, isn't it? With, you know, oh, there's yeah. no coal or firewood or anything like that around here. So they would have needed far more horsepower than they could have... The real historic significance of the site lies in the battery building, but there's very little of it left and nothing to suggest that electricity was used to drive it. Meanwhile, Dynamo Hut is a fabulous place to stay. A lovely walk-in. 
some interesting history. A great hut with all mod cons. And wonderful views all round. 